Monday. Welcome to the Habits to Goals podcast with Martin Grunberg. It's time to take control of your life. Are you ready to achieve goals faster and more consistently than ever before? You need the habit factor. You're listening to Habits to Goals, the podcast that helps you create the habits that lead to success. And here is Martin Grunberg. Alrighty, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Martin Grunberg. You have reached Habits to Goals today. And I think you may, <laughs> you may have guessed this. We have another mind bullet for a Wednesday. And who knows? That could be the way things are queuing up here around the holidays. That could happen another, uh, week or two. And as I said last week, we have so many mind bullets that as far as I'm concerned, and actually this is very fitting for the topic. I, uh, fully accept that and I welcome it. And I think it's just another fantastic way that we can get to more bigger ideas in lieu of the interviews and the interviews are coming. I can assure you. So having said that, if you don't somehow know what this is about, it is the big idea here is about of course, there's duality here, but, but it's about resistance, resistance. And it's so, so powerful. Um, I think it was Carl Jung. I don't know how long ago, a hundred plus years ago, he, he wrote and talked about this idea that what we resist will persist. Um, and when you think about just your feelings, so, so I want to share a couple examples. Um, I keep, this is going to sound totally silly, but just stay with me. I keep pens everywhere. I keep them downstairs by my, the, the table. I keep them on my floor by my bed. I mean, I just have them everywhere. And then, so I got pens and pads of paper. Um, I just, and I did a whole episode about this. The mind is for creating ideas, not capturing them. And so I have just been for many years a big believer that I have to capture and just scribble it down. And then, and then of course I try to decipher what I wrote later. Um, but I grabbed a pen and I knew it was a brand new pen and I went to write and I couldn't, basically no ink was coming out. So then I hit it a few times. I scribble, nothing's coming out. I'm just like, I can't believe this. And I'm just getting minorly worked up about a simple pen that won't write. And this happens all over my house. Then I go scrambling for pens, but I wouldn't give up because I knew it was a new pen. So I keep hammering. I'm turning it, you know, on and off, clicking it. And nothing's working. I'm probably two or three minutes in. And then I just kind of went, accept, like move on, like just stop your futile efforts to make this pen work, go get another pen. Cause what was happening was I was forgetting the idea that I wanted to write down. I was caught up in this moment. I was caught up in frustration. I was resisting the fact that this freaking pen <laughs> wouldn't work when I knew it should. And it was brand new. And it's such a silly, perfect example. So, um, anyways, it took me two or three minutes. And, and by the way, I mean, 10 years ago, that, that might have been who knows how long. So, so I moved on fairly quickly, but I, I recognized I was being stubborn and I wouldn't accept the pen. Then I thought back. Only a few days earlier in the week and our cable box went out. In fact, I know it was on a Monday night because all I wanted to do 
coming home late from work was watch, you know, the second half of the football game, even though it wasn't even a great game. Just, just watch it. So I tell my wife I'm going to be home soon ish. And she texts me, uh, the cable box is dead. And I'm just like, <laughs> it sounds so silly. I'm frustrated. I'm like, all, you know, long day at the office. All I want to do, all I want to do. So for a few minutes there, I was like, you know, poor me. I can't go watch second half of a football game. Of course, she steps up and is a hero. I was certainly not asking. In fact, I was telling her not to. She ran to the cable store and changed out the box. By the time I got home, there was a new cable box. Another example of not just accepting what is. So I was resisting it. And I don't know how many other examples I have. I could just go on and on. Um, and, and it's fascinating because I think what happens. Oh yeah, here's a couple other examples. Um, and this one I would commend me for. So I have tinnitus, which is this ringing in the ears and it's really, I don't want to say really bad. It's, it's moderately bad in the mornings and at night. I don't know if it's too many rock concerts as a, as a younger man or, or too many server rooms with humming sounds, but it, it started, I don't know, three or four years ago. And one night in my sleep, I'm like, what is that noise? And I start looking around for the computer, like what's making that humming? And then I realized if I put my fingers in my ears, um, I was still hearing it. It was stunning. And I'm like, wow, this could be really bad. Then I'm doing some research and it turns out it's fairly common. And what I, the reason I'm even talking about it, I found some people, it drives them semi nuts and they have crazy surgeries and they're doing all sorts of things. Um, and it affects them mentally. Um, I guess the reason I'm bringing it up here is I quickly accepted it. I have found that it actually doesn't bother me. It certainly bothers some of those that I'm very close to because it affects your hearing. So, um, sometimes, particularly in the mornings and evenings, I may be saying what one or two more times. Um, but that's a case of, of, I think it's a much worse condition if you resist it or if one resists it. Um, that I just, I, I find that I, <laughs> I don't mind so much. Is it bothersome? Yes, but I'm not resisting it. Same thing with the eyesight right in the middle of writing the pressure paradox. Um, a few years ago, again, one morning, I'm just like, why are, why are all these texts? Why, you know, the letters are blurry. This is crazy. It seemed like it was literally overnight. That was something that could have absolutely, um, depressed me. Certainly 10 years ago, I think that sort of experience on an overnight basis, would have left me very depressed for, for, uh, I don't know whether it's a few weeks or a few months, but I quickly just kind of accepted that you need to have these cheater, cheater readers on at times. But, but the question, I guess, for you, listener, friend, is it can be as something as significant as hearing impairment. Um, or as insignificant as a pen that doesn't work. And the question is, from my experience anyways, the statement is that, that when we respond positively to what we perceive as a negative experience, it helps to quickly dissipate or lessen the frustration and the negative experience. 
as opposed to compounding it. So the other option, something I used to do a ton of, was respond negatively to a negative experience. Angry, frustrated, kick something, punch something. Um, That doesn't do anything positive. And what that is, of course, is resistance. What we resist persists. I, you get mad, you get angry. The, the situation isn't going away. It just quickly vanishes because as soon as you accept, you're on to solutions and workarounds and ways to improve. It's very analogous, the positive negative to, um, bringing light to darkness. If, if, if darkness were negativity and light were positivity, if I just brought more darkness to darkness, it's not helping matters. You can't see anything. You bring light, acceptance to the negative situation and the negative situation again dissipates. So, We could come at this from several different angles, but the question for you is what are you resisting? We did an episode last season. It was like the four keys, according to Tony Robbins, for success. And they had to do with things like frustration, how you handle frustration, how you handle rejection, how you handle financial pressure, how you handle complacency. Well, the first few are opportunities to either accept or reject, right, or resist. And what you resist persists. You have a crappy financial situation, for instance. If you resist it, you're not you're stuck in resistance. You're not moving on to acceptance and new solutions. And you can apply this to everything. So I think we're about done. No need to um, rehash this over and over. Just check yourself where there's resistance. I think you will find that these issues persist. And I think even Carl Jung, to bring it all the way back home, would suggest to you that not only does resistance help things persist, his statement was they would they would grow. <laughs> they would um they would grow in magnitude or they would keep reoccurring. So check yourself where is their resistance? Little small uh, issues throughout the day. These are opportunities. I'm constantly <laughs> reminding myself that these are tests to see how quickly we can move from resistance to acceptance. All right, my friends, with that, I got to get out of here. Hey, thank you so much. Final, final thought. I hope this well, I know it's actually going to go out. So 1216, we're closing enrollment. Right now, there's open enrollment. What we say in this copy is the time to design the next three to five years of your life is now. I'm going to repeat that. The time to design the next three to five years of your life is right now. And 2019 is coming. And we're rolling out the breakthrough course, the 2019 edition. The course is closing, uh, meaning enrollment is closing 1216, which is just a few days away. So if you're looking for info on that, all you do is you go to thehabitfactor.com. You look on the right side, the column on the right, you'll see it should say enrollment now closing. And that is... I think we're using the Life Hacker ad. In any event, click on that. You'll get the full syllabus, the description, the overview. This is a comprehensive course, but it includes small group coaching calls, an accountability group, 
Um, a lot of really good stuff, and there's even a few bonuses. You sign up by 1216. Now, with that, I am out. Got to get out of here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for leaving a review, a few words, hopefully kind words, and then rating the show. And <laughs> may you not resist that which is frustrating you. All right. Have a great day. See ya. Hey, really quick. I just want to remind you, if you want to grab your habits and goals tracking template, the template that started it all, you can get that really quickly. Just text me at 33444 and simply text the word habits. That is habits, H-A-B-I-T-S to 33. 444 and you will get the tracking template immediately all right thank you so much for listening to the show thanks for dropping a quick review it'll take you less than 30 seconds if you're getting value and with that i will see you on the next mind bullet monday i'm out